Welcome to the Wander Learn Show. I'm your host, Franz Tapon. In this episode, I interview Johnny Ward and we talk about Africa. He specifically talks about his trips of when he went from Cape Town to Cairo and then from Cape Town all the way to Casablanca, up the east side and the west side of Africa. And also he talks about his experiences, funny, about how buses are and also how he got his Equatorial Guinea visa, which is a really hard visa to get. It's a pretty funny story. ends with that. And then after that, he gives his update as of May 10th, 2023, what he's doing on Everest. Right now, he's basically playing a waiting game to wait for the weather to clear. And he's got a funny story about losing his trekking poles. And don't forget to like and subscribe, share the video and podcast with everybody else you know. Tell us a little bit about the Africa trip. You divided Africa in two. I did, yeah. So I was broke when I started my every country thing, right? And then about the halfway point, my blog started making money and then I was... Um, Hold on, stop, stop. Uh, people are listening to that and say, you were broke and then you started traveling the world. Like that doesn't compute to most people's heads. Yeah, well, especially North Americans because they save up thousands of dollars and then throw five grand on a, on a trip to Mexico or, or wherever. Whereas I was living off like five, six dollars a day, sleeping in bus stations, riding on the top of buses and trains with the tickets half price. So I was spending like iron ore trains, iron ore trains <laughs> uh, tomorrow night. Um, so I was living off those first few years, three hundred bucks a month, and I did I, I did loads of wild ways to salvage some money. Like I did medical research where they test those drugs on you and you get locked in hospital, mm -hmm. and they uh, gave me a few grand that allowed me to travel for ages, and then. I was teaching English in Thailand and Korea, saved a few grand that would let, at my level of travel that would allow me to travel for six months, right? Anyway, so I was I was broke, but I had a, let's say two, three grand in the bank mm -hmm. and that allowed me to do this. I did this um, Cape Town to Cairo, which if your geography is not great, Africa is kind of the shape of your hand and Cairo's at the bottom, uh, Cape Town's at the bottom and Cairo's at the top right-hand corner. So I spent almost a year with public transport going from the bottom to the top. And then a few years later, I did the sa same starting point Instead of going to the northeast, I went to the northwest, Casablanca. So Cape Town to Casablanca, mm -hmm. and it was cool, pretty hardcore, as you well know. <laughs> um, nothing planned, completely independent, just with my backpack. And um, what surprised you? I, I, I tell you what frustrated me. I'm sure you've had this common problem. You, you know, it's so difficult to get from A to B. Sometimes there's no roads. You're on the back of motorbikes for hundreds of kilometers just to get from A to B. But then when sometimes you're blessed with a country that might have an actual road, and um, <laughs> And, and you buy a ticket at 6 a.m. and the bloody bus station's miles away. So you have to get up at four, have, have a quick bite, get out to the bus station at, at, to get your ticket at six. And, and you're then the you wait. And you're the only person there at right. six. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, well, I thought you were leaving at six. And I'm like, yeah, but no one's here yet. I'm like, I know, but because you're not leaving at six, they know you're not leaving at six. So they're coming later. Just start leaving at six from today. By, within a week, people will be here at six because they're going to miss the bus. Anyway, you're sitting there at bloody nine, ten in the morning. It still hasn't left right, yet. Right, right, right. <laughs> Is it the same tradition? I haven't traveled much in Southeast Asia or other parts like the Middle East. Is, do they have the same system, basically? No. Okay. There, <laughs> there's yeah, a, there's a bit time of a, focus. Yeah, and you know, like people like this kind of quirk. Really? So wait, hold on. Africa is one of the only continents where it's you have to wait for the bus to fill up? It's the only continent that you have to wait for a bus to fill up when it's got an actual leaving time. Oh, I see what you mean. So in Thailand, for example, they take minivans, but the concept is you sit in a minivan until it fills and then it right. leaves. Right, right, right. Or you get in a minivan that leaves at six and it leaves at six. Right. Not both. Right. <laughs> or it's not even both. It's whatever's slower. <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's like, they have this quirky thing. You know, if you go to Fiji or if you go to Thailand, there's oh, it's Fiji time. Oh, it's Thai time. Right. And like, it's a quirky thing to excuse yeah, sure. things being late. But Africa is a whole nother... <laughs> time zone. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, I re when I was here the first time, like when I did it for my first year here, like I would go out sightseeing, whatever I'm doing in my day in Malawi or Mozambique, or whatever, and I would come home to my like shitty guest house at like let's say 3 p.m. to recover and start my blog, start blogging, and try to make my money. And at 3 p.m., I would walk past a restaurant and I would go and order my food at 3 p.m. and then go back and work for maybe two and a half hours and then go to the back to the the shack that I've ordered my food at like five half five. And that's when they would be delivering their food, like two hours later. You know yourself. You're like, what? What have they been doing for two hours? <laughs> Even yesterday, milking he, the cows, harvesting the onions. Yeah. <laughs> like yesterday, we we pre-organized because I've got a group with me here for the iron ore train in Ma Mauritania, mm -hmm. wild adventure. And I know this guest house. I've been here loads of times. Mm -hmm. We said, listen, mate, we're coming tomorrow for lunch and dinner. We're coming at twelve. Please be ready. We turn up at twelve. Nothing's been ready. And I was like, what's going on? He's like, I thought you were just staying for dinner. I'm like, Here's the message I sent you telling you that we're coming for lunch. Anyway, <laughs> you have to be patient, and I, and I really struggle with that. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> you you vowed you will never go to a place that requires another visa. Everybody. Yeah. Well, Africa is just, you know, obviously I live in Thailand and my and the Thai passport's quite weak. So when I'm traveling with my missus, it's I have to go through a lot of visa struggles with yes. her. Yeah, yeah. I had the same problem with Cameroon. And people feel like, ah, yeah. And Cameroon's even worse than Thailand, sure. I'm sure. And people, um, <laughs> How many countries can Thai, uh, Thai visa get no, you? No, Thailand's really bad. Thailand's 60? 50? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, because Cameroon's 46. Thailand's really far down the list. Yeah, yeah. Really far down. Anyway, and then people feel like Westerners can't relate. But if you spent any time in Africa, you can relate. Like, <laughs> I've spent exactly. more time fighting for visas than right. any Thai person. How did you get your Equatorial Guinea visa? Oh, oh, I have a good story about that. So Equatorial Guinea is one of the hardest countries in the world to get a visa for. Unless you're an American. Unless you're an American, yeah. USA. <laughs> um, but the rumor is that the best place, which is still difficult, is a little outpost in Gabon. Have you heard about this place? No. There's a little guy in Gabon, a consulate in Gabon. So I went to Gabon. I was overlanding anyway. And he hadn't issued any visas for months because they just close sometimes. You know, whatever bad media they're getting because their leader's a scumbag, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And... Um, I went in and I was like, listen, I'm trying to do every country in the world. I know it. I know it's very difficult. Can you please issue me a visa? Sit down, sir. And then he's going through the process of rejection. And, he, and then I just start trying to ch make small talk with him with a mind that I'm going to try to bribe him, which is what often what you have to do, right? right? And then he's like, oh, well, it's a strange accent you've got. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm from Ireland. And he's like, oh, you're from Ireland? He said, oh, I studied my undergraduate graduate degree in Dublin. I was like, oh, really? He's like, oh, better than that. This is like nine o'clock in the morning where the embassy's open. He's like, better than that. He's like, wait a second. And he dips down and he goes, and he goes, chink, chink two bottles of Guinness. And he sets it on the desk and he goes, ksh, ksh, and he says, saloncha, which is cheers in Irish. He's like, saloncha. And then we drink our Guinness. And he got empties and we're drinking Guinness. And, I stay and 9 a.m. Yeah, and stay there until all the Guinnesses are gone, six, three each. And he's like, oh, have a great time in Equatorial Guinea. Ding, ding, on you go. Wow. So it was actually really easy for me. Wow. To get, yeah, just luck, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That was cool. The connection. Yeah, that was cool. Um, we are at the top of Kalapatar and it's rather chilly. Here we are, Marky Marks and Afghani Sam. First Afghanistan on Everest, fingers crossed. I had a lovely little walk this morning up to Kalapatar. I think it's about 5, 7, 5, 6, 5, 8, something like that. Just trying to keep the blood flowing while we wait for the weather to clear for that bad boy in the background. So, Genius of the Year award goes to Johnny Ward. Climbed that peak with everybody. Got too excited. <sighs> Got too excited taking photographs and videos at the top. Ran down the mountain. Then realized I had left my holes at the top. So now I'm climbing back up this bloody hill again. Oh, that'll be over a thousand meters. Anyway, 